the asterisk? No. Huh? No. Okay. Are you guys the last ones, or is I guess Loretta still coming? You guys, is Loretta the last one, or is there anybody else behind you guys? I think it's Loretta. Yeah. Okay. Is she close or is she far? No, okay. If she's far, we'll just start. But if if. Uh, So, um, any before we start, any guesses as to what we're looking at right here? Like, wh wh what's up with this area that's denuded? Is it for the prison? Uh, question was, is it for the prison? Good guess, but no. Other guesses? Is it like a horse area? Yes. So, this is um, an unsanctioned use. So, this is... Uh, in the wake of, so before we had the 2013 Springs fire, uh, as we mentioned before, various user communities came out here, right? And so people came on out and, and did stuff. As we can see, there's all kinds of vegetation. So that, that thing right there, sort of the star, the star of things, that's castor bean. That's a weedy invasive, not, not maybe meet all the definitions, but it's a roadside weed, a common nuisance plant not native here. We have uh, mule fat, we have coyote bush, we have a lot of these things, but it's, it's very, you know, it's, it's a, it's a shrubland, right? There's trees and stuff like that, right? So it's, it's wet. So there's lots of water down here in the water table. So these plants can, can grow. So before the 2013 Springs fire, it was hard to get around, right? You're on their trails and that was basically it. So all the folks that have horses around here, would you know come ride their horse on the trail and it was all cool once the 2013 springs fire happened once that disturbance happened this is another example you guys should think about in terms of restoration and management in general as we have these natural disasters it could be an earthquake it could be a wildfire whatever you can radically transform the landscape without guidance without community structure and norms uh, things can can go to hell in a handbasket, right? And so in this case, all of a sudden, the horse riders that were restricted to the trails, or mostly the trails, they would go up on the on the grass areas sometimes, but you know, mostly down here, they wouldn't really come down here. Now, this whole area is, I'll talk about the fire in a bit, but, but this whole area was burned up, completely walkable. So the whole area looked like this, more or less like this, a few stumps here and there. So you could easily walk from the road down to the water's edge. Not 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 a hundred percent of the stuff right next to the river burn because it's it's wet, but you know you could see the water right there, right? It was very all this a lot of the biomass is gone. So because there was no rules, the horse guys just started coming down here and kept coming and kept coming. So this area started as a as a as a drag. So they would they would tie ropes to pieces of wood. Or like like the, like those pieces of wood over there, those logs, and drag them behind the horse. And what that had the effect of is removing whatever little stubs or nubs of vegetation, anything that would pop up, crushed. So this is where the horse guys like to recreate. Nothing inherently wrong with riding your horse, but um, in a university park, you guys can't come out and bring your uh, <laughs> bring your saw horses. You guys can't come out and bring tires. But these folks, because they're out of sight, out of mind, they kind of do what they kind of want to do, right? Now, in a, in a management plan, you could totally say that. Like, hey, we're going to designate this area as the, for the horse folks, which would be totally cool. But that hasn't been done. So the lack of leadership in terms of management of this area has meant that the folks that want to do what they want to do, as long as they're not actively hurting someone or causing the ire of someone, they're kind of doing what they want to do, right? So it's a bit of a sort of wild west out here. And so as you talk about planning for restorations or management, you have to have that in the back of your mind. One of the things that we don't have a problem with here, but in many of our Southern California coastal wetlands that we need to absolutely talk about and 
the context of restoration we talked about a little bit at Malibu Lagoon is this notion of homeless folks, right? Um, so in this case, there aren't people living here, but very easily in many of our wetland sites, we do what we just did. We just stepped off the main trail for a little bit, walked a little bit around a curve and da, da, da. we could be, I would, I would not encourage you guys to do that by yourselves, right? I would encourage you guys to always go with, with a partner or a colleague or whatever, because, um, uh, you know, I'm not trying to demonize folks, but, but several folks have some maybe um, mental health issues, some drug issues, whatever, and they maybe don't always respond rationally when they get surprised by people. So we've avoided that here, thankfully, but we have other management challenges. So in the context of planning for your restoration, you absolutely have to face those things. So if we didn't face this and we just came here and started planting, I'm sure the horse guy, I don't know, but I think a likely scenario would be we'd be planting, horse guys would see us and kind of, oh, hey, and then kind of, you know, go the other way while we're out here planting. And they're not evil people. They're not trying to mess stuff up, but this is their horse area, right? Maybe they'd come out, start to walk the horse on that little chunk, and then maybe, oh, accidentally step on a couple of the plants, then a couple of the plants, then a couple of the plants, and then, you know, within a couple months, they're back to their to their other area, the full area. So um, it works best as we're in the planning stages to engage all the stakeholder groups, right? Bring everybody together and talk, and talk very honestly. Is there a way we can create a horse recreation area in the restoration, right? If we can, cool. And, and those, by and large, I found those, those folks or other user groups, if we say, hey, dude, can you guys do your stuff here? And if they're part of the process, they by and large will stay here, right? But if they're not engaged, they're gonna come out and just keep doing whatever the heck they, they wanna do. And so this is, this is a great example of, of the management vacuum being filled by people doing whatever they wanna do here. Questions? Okay, um, let me pause that.